Hi there, you're welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kofi Wachaba. On today's episode of Did You Know, we are going to do something different as we did in our previous video. I am going to show you how to do the HB electrophoresis test. For students who are studying MLS, it's going to help you a lot. And for people who had no idea of how this test is done, sit tight with us as I take you through the process. Let's get this video started. You are welcome. So the first thing you have to do is to go to the cellulos as this paper. This paper has been preconditioned in the twist buffer for five minutes. So we are going to take our cellulos as this paper and then blot it against a white paper towel. So when you put it on the white paper towel, make sure you align it gently against the white paper towel and then cover it and then blot it. Hit it gently, not so hard in order to get a substantial amount of the trace buffer from the cellulose acid paper. When you are done blotting, check for the hard surface of the cellulose acid paper and then place the smooth surface of the paper against the walls of the chamber. After placing it on the well, make sure you align it so well that it's in position, just as I'm doing in the video right now. Now let's pay attention to the cords connecting to the chamber right now. The black cord is the cathode and the red is the anode. I'm going to make application at where the cathode is, where the black cord is connecting to where my hand is at right now. Now the paper is placed nicely on the walls of the chamber. So the first thing you have to do is reach out to your controls. This is the AA control I'm holding in my hand right now. You get your applicator. I'm using this tiny wooden stick as my applicator. Dip it in the sample and make a line at the far end of the cellulose acetate paper. Remember, that's your AA control. So from there, we take the next sample. The next sample is the patient sample. So you see I've written Albert on it. We do same as we did for the AA control. You open it, you dip the applicator in the slice cell, then you make a line like directly close to where you made the AA control. You cover it and then you put it down. From there, we are going to take the next control, which is the AS control. So you dip it in it as well, just as we've done for the two samples. You make a line which is literally the third line now on the cellulose acetate paper and then you cover the sample and put it down from there we move to the last control which is the ss control you dip your applicator in it then you make the last line on the cellulose acetate paper just as you are seeing the video from there put anything contaminated at a place to be discarded immediately so from there Cover your chamber tightly, make sure it's covered well, and then look for the power supply. Connect the plug to the electrical supply. Make sure everything is set and intact, and then turn on the power button. Now everything is set. We are going to wait and read the results after 40 minutes. Stay tuned. Now the time is up. Let's pay a close attention to the test results displayed on the screen. We use three controls and one patient sample. Before I interpret the test results, let's pay attention to this brief information. Before I started with the procedure, I lysed the cell. This is the basic thing you have to know about HB electrophoresis. All the controls and the patient sample was lysed and then we subject it to electricity. The controls and the patient sample had to run literally from this point way up to this point. So if we take this point as the line for the race to start and then we take this point as where the race ended, then you can clearly see that the AA control is first in line the patient sample is also first in line because it's literally on the same line and the other controls are lagging behind 
we can say they are both second and third so that's how we do the hb elect for you to know we subject all the controls and the patient sample to electricity then we allow them to run from a point a to a point b the one which is able to run faster to reach the point where they are supposed to end the race are mostly the aa controls literally the people who belong to the group aa and then we take the patient sample we subject it to electricity as well just as the others then we see whether it's going to be on the same line as the aa control the as control ac control ss control sc control almost all the controls so where the patient control lies is the kind of genotype the patient belongs to so now if you take a closer look at the test result the aa control which is this one is on the same line as the patient sample which is this one and the other controls are literally lagging behind because the patient sample is on the same line as the aa control i can confidently say that the patient has hemoglobin AA on their red blood cells. So this is how the test is done and how the result is interpreted. Now listen, hemoglobin is a protein in your red blood cells that carries oxygen from your lungs to the rest of your body. There are several different types of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin electrophoresis is a test that measures the different types of hemoglobin in your blood. It also looks for abnormal types of hemoglobin. Let's look at the normal types of hemoglobin. We have hemoglobin A. It is the most common type of hemoglobin in healthy adults. Hemoglobin F. This is a fetal hemoglobin. This is the type of hemoglobin which is found in unborn babies and newborns. Hemoglobin F is replaced by hemoglobin A shortly after birth. If levels of hemoglobin A and hemoglobin F are too high or too low, it can indicate certain types of anemia. Abnormal types of hemoglobin. The first one is the hemoglobin S. This is the type of hemoglobin found in sickle cell disease. Sickle cell disease is an inherited disorder that causes the body to make stiff, sickle-shaped red blood cells. Healthy red blood cells are flexible, so they can move easily through the blood vessels. Sickle cells can get stuck in the blood vessels, causing severe and chronic pain, infections, and other complications. The next type of abnormal hemoglobin is hemoglobin C. This type of hemoglobin does not carry oxygen well. It can cause a mild form of anemia now to hemoglobin e this is the type of hemoglobin which is mostly found in people of southeast asian descent people with hemoglobin a usually have no symptoms or mild symptoms of anemia a hemoglobin electrophoresis test applies an electric current to a blood sample this separates normal and abnormal types of hemoglobin each type of hemoglobin can be measured individually.